Welcome to the Mind of Basketball Podcast, also known as MOB Podcast. I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast, where we recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from previous games from previous days. How are you this Wednesday afternoon, Ja? Well, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Like, you know, happy Black History Month to all the people out there. You know what I mean? I just realized. Yeah, happy Black History Month. We forgot to mention that two pods ago. <laughs> So you can tell how we're good, how good we are at this. But yeah. um, yeah, happy Black History Month. Uh, hope you're doing good, job. Ja. I'm doing good. Hope everyone's doing good. Hope everyone have have a good day. Hope everyone, hope everyone has a had a good day. Hope everyone will have a good day. Um, only a few games happened last night around the association, but <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, some interesting games some interesting um moments in those games oh some look at him some interesting performances and i guess with the guy behind me let's start off with the clippers and the nets game that took place last night possibly oh <laughs> possibly a finals matchup possibly uh, yeah. The Clippers got out to a hot start. Started off the game court. Started off the game to a fourteen two run. Yeah, and it looked like they had no answer. But the Nets and their high powered offense got back into that game really quickly. And then from the second quarter on, a uh, back and forth ensued. Back and forth trading buckets, bucket after bucket. The stars came out. Kawhi, PG, Harden, Durant, Kyrie. They all was there. And they all played great in the fourth quarter as a tie game. Kyrie Irving show happened. <laughs> back to back to back buckets for Kyrie Irving. And then Nets said, you know what? You're not the only star player. Let's go. Harden hit a three. <laughs> Later on, KD hit a three. It looked like the game was, you know, going to be over with that run. But no, the Clippers went, had a little run, went back into the game with the Batum three. And then yeah. they were down by four. And PG hit a corner three. They were down by one. He hit a corner three? No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that back up. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you, no, that, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, it didn't go off the side of the backboard this time. <laughs> but here, corner three, and they were down by one. And an interesting strategy by Steve Nash, fouling the Clippers yeah. in order for them not to hit a three because the Nets had hit their free throws and they were down by three. And they said, no, we're not gonna, they're not going to let them get a chance to hit a three. Yeah. Fouled them, sent them to a free throw line, did that twice. And that's basically how they won this game by not allowing the threes. Yeah. And so um, the Nets were able to close out this game and win this close one. Now yep. so. um defensive woes showed early for the Nets when that when that beginning run happened. It clearly and at that point, uh, I was kind of saying in my mind this probably is going to be the common theme throughout this game like you know what I mean probably like you know the Nets trying to find their offense quickly and early and like when they struggle against a team like the Clippers who do it on both ends it's going to probably be in a kind of a problem but you know it was just a matter of time they said in the in, in um the commentators were saying that you heard Grant Hill say, say it like it was only a matter of time until the Nets got on a roll and which they did and specifically when you look at it again, this is the game that came down to to less about defense and more about just pure bucket getting. Because again, just like you said, this is two championship contending teams who are looking to look at the big goal at the end of the year. And it always told I know they always say the saying that defense wins championships, but offense is a really big important thing because you got to put points up on the board. And that's what both of these teams were showing as as a likely preview. I could be wrong because it could be any other team, but likely preview. And um, going down to specifically what you said in that fourth quarter, it was just the Kyrie Irving show. The art display that he put on on the court was just masterful from just pure bucket getting to creating his own shot to doing a mix of blend of shooting deep shots to getting to the basket, attacking footwork on display. He was just putting on the show. And as a result, you just saw that he was the one who like, you know, even though everyone had the, even though KD and, and Harden also showed up, he was the main reason, he was the main closer, I could say. 
Mm, yep. Ky- um, Kyrie finished with 39 in the game. And I just want to bring up Harden. I have really been impressed with how he's accepted this role. He's yeah. kind of took a back seat in scoring. And even though he does have the ball in his hands, he's become an elite facilitator. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, been actually, fin- actually. he's been finding his teammates. He's been finding, um, making plays for his teammates, not just Kyrie and Katie. I'm talking about Joe Harris as well. Um, um, Jordan, bench players. Like, he's really impressed me with how well he's accepted this role and he hasn't been forcing up shots. He hasn't been the Houston Harden. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and this doesn't shock me because I believe there was one specific moment in which he led the league in assists. Yes, when he was two, on the two years ago, I think, yeah. or three yeah, years ago, two three years ago, I think in 2017 or 2018, one of those years. Mm. It, it, it doesn't shock me because again, we knew that somebody was going to have to make a sacrifice, and even though we thought out of all of them, it would be, in my opinion, I thought it would be Kyrie, but actually, surprisingly, it has been him. And this is not a surprise that he's facilitating this well because we saw this out of him. And again, like I always say, great elite scorers like himself, when you're playing in a certain situation, you got to find a way to do something different. And as a result, that's what he's been doing. He's been more the point, more of the pure point guard than what you expect him to actually be. And as a result, he's having his niche in his team and they're doing successful because of it. Just to be honest, when you look at it, don't get me wrong, he can still go on his big scoring runs, but his ability to 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 have a have an eye for the court, open eye for the court nowadays and send people up has been really amazing to watch. Yeah, I'm not so surprised about the facility. I'm surprised about that he's taking a step back. And he's yeah. allowing the, and he's allowing his team to go. He's allowing KD when he needs to go up and Kyrie when he needs to go up. Because I already seen KD, you know, take a step back. Yeah. And kind of be a catch and shoot uh player or cut into the basket uh player slasher. But Harden, like that, I really I'm really really impressed. And he deserves all that the praise that he's got because he's helped. Yeah, well, me. yeah. Well, he wants a chip. So he so he has but so he's making this in his mind so no matter what, I'm gonna do what I gotta do in order to get to that big prize. Yep. As for the Clippers, uh, this was a very competitive game from their standpoint. I mean, they kept in it. Um, Leonard, 33. Batum stepped up big with 21. PG with another great performance. Um, Morris um, helped them off the bench as well. But, you know, they just – they are they are a good defensive team, but, yeah, they, they just couldn't stop Kyrie late. <laughs> you can't stop any of them. You, 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 yeah. yeah. No matter how great of a defensive team you are, when you're going against elite talents, you know how to score in varieties of ways with multiple counter moves, you just can't stop them, to be honest. So good try by the Clippers. This is a loss that even though you shouldn't be proud that you lost, you should still be proud about with the way you fought. Yeah, the Clippers I mean, shouldn't – yeah, they shouldn't be upset about, like, this loss like that. It shouldn't really hinder them, you know? Exactly. But especially when they've been playing great basketball throughout the season. But yeah, uh, competitive um, game, very interesting game, and a great win by this Brooklyn Nets team to come out late and close out this game, get this win. All right, the other game that happened later on the night, the next primetime game, featured the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors, and Curry had it going. <laughs> From the jump, Stephen Curry, the two-time MVP, the greatest three-point shooter, in my opinion, of all time, was just on fire. Finished with 38 in the game. Celtics had no answer. I mean, you could tell they missed Marcus Smart. <laughs> Immediately, they missed Marcus Smart. Now, maybe Curry could have done the same thing as Smart. <laughs> but Smart improves your chances defensively because he is one of the best on-ball defenders in this, in this league. Yeah. Um, And they missed Smart, and the Warriors missed Wiseman. <laughs> Because Wiseman didn't play in this game, and you could tell they were lacking an interior um, defender and an interior offender on offense because that's where the Celtics are kind of um, weak, is in down low in the post and in the low post defensively. So Wiseman would have been big for them. But they didn't have Wiseman. Celtics didn't have um, Smart. And this was a good back-and-forth game, but – well – 
before I finish with the end result. It looked like South is about to, you know, go on and win it comfortably. Then the Warriors came back, led by Curry on um, Wiggins, and they made a little run, and they was able to get back into this game. But then the Celtics closed out the game late, late in the fourth and was able to pick up this win. Your thoughts? Well, yeah, um, and you said specifically, and even though, yes, Curry had an amazing game, let's be honest, the bench production of the Warriors was the reason why they usually went on most of their runs. Um, you talk about Wiggins. Well, Wiggins doesn't come yeah, over. Wiggins starts. Starts. He starts. But, like, guys like Pascal, um, Toscano Anderson. Um, yeah, he, he came out of nowhere. <laughs> he came out of nowhere. Like, these, these guys, their bench production, regardless of what the point total for them shows, when they're clicking as a team, they're able to go on runs like this because, again, they have the energy to do it on both ends. Baysmore. But, yep, Baysmore. Like, all of those guys. All and of those guys. But um, the reason why the Celtics was able to pull out this game is not only did they – number one, we got pulled before this. Jalen Brown had a monster dunk. But as I was about outside of that, um, their defense <laughs> – Yes, he did. Defense, yes, he did. <laughs> their defense saved them because they were able to – they knew – what they had to do in order to close out this game, and they was able to clamp up, go into their defensive lockdown stances, and just go to work. And I feel like Kemba kind of getting back into his rhythm. In terms of the field goal percentage, he didn't have the best shooting night, but he did take a lot of shots. And he did – we was taking those and making some of the shots that you usually see him make. I mean, one of the plays you saw the patented cardiac Kemba, the same move that he did in college eh, in the buzzer beater, you know, from the free throw line. So, like, I like to see Kemba getting comfortable. I believe this was the most minutes he played um, mm-hmm. this season so far. So, you know, they need they need Tatum and Brown and Walker to make yeah. a run. They need all of them to be playing well. They need them to be scoring at will. They need them to be in their best form. Yeah, and they need their whole team healthy. They need Marcus Smart back, just like you said. They need their whole team healthy along with those guys being highly productive. Yeah, I mean, they have the Celtics well a lot of the league hasn't been healthy in terms of everything that's going on with, of course, all the injuries that just come with playing basketball in the NBA. And of course, now adding to the COVID um, situation. Yeah, the COVID situation. So the Celtics really haven't been healthy. Um, this is like their third game fully with Tatum, Brown, and Walker in the lineup. But yeah. this isn't a full game healthy because Smart, like you said, Smart is out. Yeah. So like they started the season – Kemba was out. Then Kemba came back, and Tatum was out. Yeah. You know, now they all come back. Now Smart, Smart is out. So it seems like they just they can't get fully healthy. Yeah, it changes up time and time again. It's just like it's, it's something that's out of their control. Yes. So. But in the end, when Tatum, Brown, and Walker all score and score a big amount, a large amount of their point total, yeah. they're, that's, in their best. that's when they're able to make that next jump and get those wins yeah exactly oh, yeah um a great competitive game once again of course they had no answer for curry but in the end they didn't need an answer for curry because <laughs> this the warriors really couldn't stop them either so yeah. a great win by the celtics and we'll see if now um Jalen brown walker and tatum can all be in the same lineup and be healthy for them all right, there was, well, first, before we even get to the uh, one game that we want to talk about, let's talk about the great performance down there in Orlando between the Raptors and the Magic. And, of course, that one man that we're talking about, Fred Van Vliet, who had the second highest point total this season, of course, behind Curry's 62 54 points by Fred Van Vliet with uh, this win in the Raptors team against this Magic's team. Two records he broke. One record, which was held by DeRozan, which was the um, highest point total in Toronto Raptors history, which was 52. That was broken by Fred Van Vliet. And the second... We will never forget you, DeRozan. Go on. Sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. They did forget him. You know why they forgot him? Shut up, shut up. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Stop, 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 stop. Go on. They forgot about it real quick. Stop, 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 stop. 
Uh, remember when they was like, don't trade the Rose, and he's been so Stop loyal. It. Stop he's it. So wrong. By the end of the season. Finish. We Finish. are the champions. The second record, please. Thank you. Oh, man. Relax. I will never make him disrespect you. I will never make them disrespect you, DeRozan. He ain't that great now. He ain't Jordan. <laughs> well, nobody. Nobody can ever be Jordan. He ain't Bron. Oh, we know he ain't Bron. <laughs> <laughs> we know he. <laughs> oh, well, enough clowning! Okay. Enough clowning the Rosen. The second record that Fred Van Vliet was that he broke the um largest point total held by an undrafted player. That was held by Hall of Famer Moses Malone, who had fifty three, and of course he broke that as well. So two records that Fred Van Vliet broke. 11 three-pointers in the game, five three-pointers in the first quarter, eight and a half. And then after like the after he hit 11 three-pointers in the third, he was like, okay, now it's time to take it to the hoop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and because you know why? Because the Magic started doubling him. They started doubling him. And even when they doubled him, they couldn't they couldn't even stop him like that. Well, it was again, pressing up on him too, too up. Yeah. They, so and they get, they get, yeah, they didn't get give him space. So he said, "Okay, I'm just gonna blow by you. I'm faster than all of you anyway." Yeah, but yeah, that's that's uh, we look at. Even though we saw all the strides happen that same championship year, Fred Van Vliet is a pure hooper, and he's been showing it time and time again ever since that 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 2000, 2000, uh, 2019 championship. Yeah, like that's that. um playoff run and the finals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great performance by Fred Van Vliet. And even then, the Magic, well, towards the end, they kind of let up. But the Magic staying real close in the game, you see that yeah. monster put back by Cole Anthony. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that monster put back. But yeah, even though they were staying in the game, Vucevic, of course, having another great game. Um, Evan Fournier stepped up big for them with 21 points. Um, but then in the end, of course, they had no answer for um, Van Vliet. Fred, yeah, Van Vliet. It was the, just giving the them Raptors, trouble. Yeah, and the whole Raptors team fed off of that too. Um, just playing high octane at that point, surprisingly. I yep. never thought about that. Carl Lowry finished with a triple double. Norman Powell finished with 24 coming off the bench. And a great win by this Raptors team. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, <laughs> they can get some more wins to get yeah. to 500. I mean, they're not, they, they came a long way. They're only three games behind 500. That's good. So yeah, we'll see. Malpe, well, hopefully, Malpe could return, come spicy again. Hopefully, let's just say that. <laughs> we'll see how this Raptors team can get some more wins and you know get get in the playoff run. But all right, um, the other game that we both wanted to talk about featured the Blazers and the Wizards, and as Soul Soul said, back to life, back to reality. <laughs> As you can tell by what I just said, the Wizards once again proved that they still suck and their defense still suck. And Westbrook proved once again that he is not better than Damian Lillard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, they had no answer for uh, Dame late. Uh, well, they had no answer for Gary Trent in the first half. Yeah. And they, to be honest, the Wizards didn't have no answers for any 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 of the Blazers players in that first. They half. had no answers for Melo. <laughs> like, and, and like and he was they, back in New York. <laughs> look, at, the Blazers won on the big run, and even when the Wizards had their small runs, it was still not enough because they were still down by double digits, regardless. So it got to a point that even even down the stretch, when it looked like they kind of did the shocking and the probable again. The Blazers said, hell no. <laughs> what you what you think this is going on? Dame Tom had it cooking <laughs> during that mm -hmm. during that last moment of the game. Yeah, because the Wizards, I mean, they had those little runs. And then towards the end, they had that big run where they cut it into four. Um, yeah. Bradley Beal finished with 37. Of course, Bradley Beal's been having a great um, season individually. Rui Hachimura yeah. had a good game, finished with his season high point total, 24. Russ wasn't as aggressive offensively, but he did finish with triple double. And yeah, like I said, they cut the lead within four. What? Here's what you said. 
Russell Westbrook finished with a triple double, but what's his point total? Had 17. 17. That's not enough. That's not enough. And look, and you said that they, they was down by where they cut it to four. Mm-hmm. And he only had 17. Just imagine if he had 22, 23. Not even 22, 23. 23, 25, or 27. Because yeah, when they cut it to four, he didn't put a point into um that um run that they had. It was Hachimura and Beal. But as I said, they cut it to four. Then you know what time it was. It was Dame time. Dame with a blow by on Russ and then a dunk <laughs> right on the wizard's head. And then, of course, the deep three to close it out and win this game for this Trailblazers team. What he do? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, that that's just a bad shot to me. <laughs> oh, but yeah, another disappointing loss by the Wizards. We expected them to come out, you know, with using that momentum against this Nets team, against the Nets um win a couple of nights ago, but they didn't. Yeah, I and guess in the end. Yeah, I guess it goes same straight. old, same old, same old, same old Wizards. Yeah, In yeah. reality, they should have lost to that Nets team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they only do better when they play against them, I guess, because that's the only way. They got two of their wins against the Nets, so that's the only way. Yeah. Uh, this point performance by the Wizards. But what else can you say? <laughs> All right. It is prediction time for tonight's set of games. Some interesting slew of games, so we're going to go rapid fire. First, starting off with the Pacers and Pacers, the 76ers and the Hornets. Who you got? 76ers. Sixers. First primetime game on ESPN 7 o'clock featured the features, the Indiana Pacers up against the Milwaukee Bucks. Who you got? Bucks. Bucks as well. Mavericks or the Hawks? Hawks. Hawks. The Clippers or the Cavs? Clippers. Clippers, the Wizards or the Heat? Heat, the Rockets or the Thunder? Um, Rockets. Rockets, the Timberwolves or the Spurs? Spurs. Spurs. The next primetime ESPN game features the Phoenix Suns up against the New Orleans Pelicans. I got the Suns. Suns. And lastly, the Celtics or the Kings? The Celtics. <laughs> Celtics. <laughs> All right, I think it's time to wrap things up. Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, um, can I ask you a quick question about Blake Griffin? Um, <laughs> we already know that he should be off the team, but what team do you think he should go to? <sighs> no, it's a contending team. You know, it's a contending team who you should yes. go to. Who do you think could be would be the best fit? Because I don't know. Uh, um, let me think. I mean, like, you don't even know, right? <laughs> it's hard. Like, where, where do you place him? I think he should go back to the West. Yeah. Okay, but then what team? Uh, the Grizzlies, maybe? The Grizzlies would be good, but they then they got then you got to make way for Jaron Jackson. Yeah, that's and that's the thing. Uh, and um, he could probably be a good front court partner with Porzingis. No, the way has built. that doesn't help any of their problems. Their defense sucks. They added Lake Griffin. Their defense will still suck. Yeah. Um. Maybe that helps Luca get the ball out of his hands. Yeah, but. Really, Luca's not. Luca needs the ball in his hands, offensively. You know. Yeah, he do, but I feel like Blake Griffin has again transformed his, his skill set, which like you know he can spread it out in a way. So that's the reason why I say them possibly. Um, okay. Um, Clippers. Clippers. Actually, <laughs> actually, that wouldn't be bad though. That wouldn't be bad actually. That would not. And. If the Lakers did not have Montrezl Harold, I say that one been a perfect fit for them. But since they do got Montrezl Harold, then no. The Jazz. And... Yeah. Per- oh yeah, the Jazz. the Jazz. I think I think he will fit well in Jazz. I mean, they got Russell Neal starting, starting, and he's good. But I think Blake Griffin will be an upgrade. 
from yeah. Oris O'Neal. So I yeah, I think Jazz. What about the Nuggets? Like they do got Paul Millsap in mind. Yeah, they got Millsap. Uh, the, but that, that that's not bad. That's actually not bad. Those two Jazz or, or or Nuggets that that's not bad. Um, but hopefully, but I say it's mainly specifically the Jazz needed more than the Nuggets. So Jazz, somebody need to send this video to somebody from the Jazz organization. If you're hearing this, go get Blake. He needs some help. He needs to, he needs to be saved. What about the Heat? Who they got? They got bad. They got Bam though. Or oh, is Bam their big man? Their, Bam's their center. center. Bam's their center. I mean, who's okay, better yeah. than Blake on that team? Uh, Precious is good. He's been playing really well it was with all the injuries that they had. Um, but he's I don't put him over Blake Griffin. Kelly uh-huh. Ol- Olenek's not better than Blake Griffin. No, no. Yeah, actually, yeah, that 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 doesn't seem that's not bad either. He, mm-hmm, but who else in the who else? But that's that to that heat culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he has no choice but to um who else um this no not sixes no 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 uh uh-uh. uh because they'll trade one of their shooters and they don't need their shooters yeah oh Indiana oh no no you got Miles Sabonis Turner. Sabonis yeah. and Miles Turner yeah um. Damn, I don't got nobody else right now. For and then Atlanta got John Collins. Yeah. And then the Bucks got Giannis. <laughs> they got Giannis and they got Bobby Portis. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I say, oh, I pros this. They go, he go to the Bucks, right? Let's say he go to the Bucks. Put Giannis back to his original position, which was the three. Mm-hmm. Middleton back to his original position, which was, which was two. Two. There you the go. Holidays. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. What do you think about that? Yeah, that, 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 I think that will most definitely get them over the hump. Yeah. You think that fixed their problem of, or Mike Budenholzer problem of having Giannis, you know, start at half court and then that will set their box and one defense up? Because yeah. Griffin can, can Griffin bring, bring up the bring ball. Yeah, he can Griffin, bring up the ball. He can bring and how they can bring up the ball as well. Yeah. But yeah. Saves them. He just needs to go. He needs to go. He really needs to go. I'm tired <laughs> of seeing him in that Detroit Pistons um, colorway. Yeah. Like, it's it's just embarrassing to Rasheed Wallace right now and Dennis Rodman. <laughs> For real, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> but, yeah, trade Blake Griffin, please, Pistons, if any of y'all are watching. I know you're not. But trade Blake Griffin. Uh, it'll help your organization. You can get a pick, you know, yep. build for the future, and hopefully it will bring another team over the hump. Yeah, but I don't think here it's not helping you or him staying in Detroit. Yeah. All right. And with all of that being said and all of that out the way, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And follow our IG down in the description below. Oh, by the way, I forgot I just forgot again. <laughs> oh, the Knicks or the Bulls. <laughs> I'm Bulls. Knicks. Don't do that. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? What I do? It's not ninety-two. <laughs> I know yeah, they just won, but come on, man. Yeah, but it is ninety-three. Stop. Sorry. They don't got Jordan. Zach Levine ain't Jordan. <laughs> we might get Zach Levine though. Actually, that's a rumor. Let's not talk about that. All right. Now, continue on with the outro. <laughs> Once again, I am Evan, and I'm Ja, and this. <laughs> was the Minor Basketball Podcast.